Hello friends, this video on surface chemistry part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we have seen what are colloidal colloids, how to prepare it, how to purify it. Now let's see some properties of the colloid. We'll see seven properties of the colloid. The first is colligative properties, which depends on the number of particles. We'll talk about the Tyndall effect. We'll talk about the color. We'll talk about the Brownian movements. We'll talk about the charge on the colloidal particles. And we'll talk about electrophoresis and we'll also talk about the coagulation or precipitation of colloidal particles. Let's start with the colligative properties. As I told, colligative property are the property that depends only on the number of particles. For example, we talk about the osmotic pressure, right? We talk about the lowering of vapor pressure. We have seen this in the last chapter, I think. Uh, we talk about the elevation of boiling point, we talk about the depression and freezing point. All these are my colligative properties. These properties depend on number of particles. Right? Now we talk about the number of particles in colloids also. We talk about what? Particle size. Right? That is something which decide it is a colloid or not. So this as and I, I know that this colloidal particles they are bigger than the true solution right now thus since it depends on the number of particles since the particle size are smaller right their colligative properties are smaller see what i'm saying trying to say is if we talk about the pure solution pure solution my particle size is this if I talk about colloids, particle size is this, correct? So if I take, let's suppose uh, this much of pure solution and this much of So pure solution, how many particles I'll be getting with that size? Just you see, I won't count it, I mean just visualize. We're doing this many number of or colloids, since the particle size has to be bigger as compared to pure solution, I'll be getting, let's suppose, these many particles. Now, for the same amount, because in the beaker, I'm, I'm, let's suppose I took uh, uh, one liter, and here also I took one liter, right, or one kg, whatever you want, right, let's take one kg per mark. In both cases, I'm getting one take kg per unit mass. Colloidal particles has less number of less let me write with this we conclude that colloids has less number of particles per unit mass as compared to pure solution. Okay, in a sense, the pure solution, the particle size is small. For the same 1 kg, we got so many particles. Collide, the particle size were bigger. For the same 1 kg, we got only 4 particles. Just assuming in this case, right? Obviously, for 1 kg, you won't get 4 particles. You'll get more. So, now if you see, or let me say x kg. Just to avoid confusion. Both has x kg. Now, with this, we can see that the collide has less number of particles per unit mass as compared to pure solution. Now, since the colligative properties depends on what number of particles, right? Colligative properties depend totally on number of particles. Now, it has four particles, it has so many particles. So, what do you think about the colligative properties here? Thus, the colligative properties of collides will be of smaller order. Correct? So, that is what is there. So, for, coll for colloidal particles or for colloids, the colligative properties such as osmotic pressure, lowering of vapor pressure, elevation of boiling point, depression, freezing point, all these colligative properties you get. For example, you have this solution, you added some uh, impurities or some other thing, you expect the uh, boiling point to increase. But this increase in boiling point will be less for colloids as compared to pure solution. The depression and freezing point also will be less for colloids as compared to pure solution right so that is what i'm trying to say for colligative properties 
If you compare the colligative properties of colloids and pure solution, you will see that the colligative properties of colloids are of small order as compared to true solution because in the last chapter or the previous chapter when we studied colligative properties, we, we studied colligative properties only for true solutions. So here we are trying to say that colligative property of colloids will be of lesser order, smaller order as compared to the colligative property of pure solution because colligative property depends totally on the number of particles. In pure solution, you have more number of particles. In colloids, you have less number of particles for same unit mass. The next is Tyndall effect. See, Tyndall effect, when we pass a strong beam of light through a true solution, this is a true solution. See, true solution, the particle size is very small. The particle size is so small that these particles will not even disperse the light. So, you will not see anything. You will see light till this point and then you will see a blank nothing. It will be normal solution. If you take water and NaCl, for example, water and salt, you mix and prepare a solution. You'll see, you can do it in your home, pass a laser light, you'll see, you'll not see any difference here. But if you take water and milk, this is a colloid. I can say this is water plus milk. And you can do, do this in home, this is pure water also you can take, or you can take water plus NaCl. Water plus NaCl. Right? Now if you pass this beam of light, in this case, my colloid is water plus milk, you see this red path here because the laser light is red here you'll see a path here why this path because this colloidal particle as i told are bigger in size right and this two solution they're smaller in size these smaller size particles are not even able to disperse the light but the colloidal particles are a little bigger so if the light is passed through this colloidal solution the path of the light is visible why because the light is dispersed by this bigger particles and this is called Tyndall effect right since the colloidal particles are bigger in size they can scatter the light this scattering of light the scattering of light illuminates this path and this is called Tyndall effect right we have seen the Tyndall effect in the gardens also you must have seen in the morning if you go you'll see some Tyndall effect there also because of the light or sometimes in the cinema hall, if you go to cinema hall, you'll see the projector. The projector, a huge beam of light. This is cinema hall actually. This is light example. This is a projector. There will be projector here. From here, this will be huge beam of light. You can see, right? Sometimes you can visualize this path of light. Why? Because the dust particle in this cinema hall, you can actually visualize the path of this light. And that is also a good example of Tyndall effect. Right? The cinema hall, this is a screen where some movies. Like there's the projector behind, you can just observe next time when you go to cinema hall, there's a projector behind, the beam of light will be thrown on the screen. You can actually visualize the beam, beam of light. Why? Because of the Tyndall effect. Because air itself is a colloid, right? Because the air has dust particles in it. It's a colloid, solid in gas. Solid in gas, aerosol actually you say. It's a colloid. The light particles, uh, you can actually see the light. Why? Because the, the dust particles in the air will actually deflect this light and you can see the path of this. See there are some conditions for Tyndall effect. As I told you can see this in a garden also in the morning if you go very morning the fog, fog is nothing but a colloid and with that we see some small beam of light coming in. You can see the actually ray of light. But now in normal case you don't see the ray of light. The sunlight you don't see. You just see it's all uh, bright but you, you can't see the ray of light. right? But in the, if you go in the morning, in, some, in the winter season, in some garden or something, you'll see the fog and with the fog, you can actually see, visualize the ray of light. That is also because of Tyndall effect. So there are some conditions for Tyndall effect. And the condition is that the diameter of the dispersed particle, if you see, it should not be very small. It should be comparable to the wavelength of the light used. So diameter of particles which is dispersing should be comparable to wavelength of light that is used. So in this case, the particle size is very very small. This small particles is not able to disperse the light. But in this case, the particle size are bigger. 
since the particle size is bigger, this particle are able to disperse the light. This is the first condition for Tyndall effect. The second is the refractive index of the dispersed phase and dispersion medium should differ in magnitude greatly. It's more of physics terms now. The refractive index of this dispersed phase, for example, in this water and the dispersion, for a dispersed phase, in this case, the milk and dispersion medium, that is water, that should differ greatly. Right? So Tyndall effect is used actually to differentiate between the colloidal and the true solution. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.